Not to be like the world and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. What's wrong with you people? I'm serious. You can't say amen. You ought to say ouch. Hello, humble bees. Welcome to Tulips and Honey. Okay, well, welcome back, humble bees. This is another episode of our mega list. So this is our mega list for today. It's a very strange and different and special mega list. And so it's really not a list at all. It's actually a list of your questions. And so we are going to actually be doing this mega list today on Friday because you are in Disneyland right now. You don't know it yes. because right now you're here. But yes. by the time this is posted, you're in Disneyland. So I hope you're having fun. I know. I hope I'm having fun too. Future Becca, <laughs> have fun. Yes. <laughs> Stop worrying about the virus and have fun. <laughs> Please pray for me, y'all. I don't want to be quarantined. I don't want to be quarantined. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. That's my biggest concern, which is really sad, but I'm just like, yeah. I don't, really don't want to be quarantined away from my family. Right? I know it's like two weeks of quarantine. Okay. Stop it. Sorry. She's trying to get into something. I had to smack the, de the desk to get her attention because she was ignoring me. Yes, that's right. I don't want to be quarantined. You don't want to be quarantined. So please be praying for Becca while you're seeing this. She is actually over there in California, which is a weird, it's weird that California is like where so much of it is happening. But I know it's primarily like LAX and yeah. I forget the other airport, but yeah, it's a lot of international travel in and out. Yep. They should really probably stop a little bit of that right, right? now. But <laughs> Well, that was just my yes. opinion, but not until you guys get back because otherwise it would be a problem. But we are going to go through these questions really quickly because you have a lot of packing. And actually, while we're recording this, it's your birthday. When we're posting Aww. this, it's not your birthday anymore, but today it is. And so, oh, but it's, it's the best. It's the best gift to like work with Lauren on my birthday. Aww. It's so really sweet. Plus, it's my heart. I'm I'm so stoked on Fridays. So the fact that my birthday fell on Friday, and your birthday was on Monday, so it's our birthday Aww. month. It's it is. We have yeah. a whole birthday month now. That's right. We're taking Monday. over March. It's just all of ours. <laughs> That's right. But I know. There's like March Madness. What are we gonna call it? March Besties or something. Nice. We'll have to work on that. Yep. This is a, of course, it's it's going to be Val or not Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day soon. So we'll be doing an episode soon about the history of. St. Patrick's Day. Patrick's Day. I don't know if you guys like our history episodes, but whether you like them or not, we enjoy doing them. So we're yes. doing them. <laughs> They're really good. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. And Grace is my favorite color, so I'm like all about this. And if anybody's wondering, Lauren and I, I think I said, I said this on the other mega list, but we have the same birthday month. We have the same um, an wedding anniversary month, which is in September. And we both got, we heard the gospel. Um, in July, I think on July 4th for both of us. I'm not 100% sure for mine. It's either July 3rd or July 4th. But how crazy is that? Right. It's so it's so providential. We are like for real so over here on like our new birth day, which is my favorite one to celebrate. Is the same, yes. very similar. I love it. Right. That's, That's so, so providential. That's like so providential and stuff. Okay. So our crazy, weird mega list is going to be questions. You guys have sent in a lot of questions. We we want to do many episodes so we're, we're loving our mini sews but this week because we couldn't do our mini sews we decided that we would put the questions into a mega list instead mm -hmm. and that way you guys are still getting your your friday you know fix and you're yes. not going to be like oh no i'm deep like i'm like I'm, i need my my tulips and honey or i'm gonna like you know go into <laughs> withdrawals so we don't want that we don't want you to withdraw because we love you i know maybe we could still do like a quick like live check-in and send those out to people i don't know it's just a quick that would be fun a little quick you, while you're there and it just depends on how the internet is there right. in in uh in disney so we'll see yes. but our first question and we're not going to answer all of these we are going to push some of these off mm -hmm. until the following episode yep. yes just some yeah. of them some of them are going to get answered then some we're going to get answered now we yeah. don't know which ones yet because we just decided that on the drive before we right. started recording. And some of them will go, they'll be really quick. The first two are especially really quick. Yep. We're hashtag not professional. So uh -huh. here we go. go. Connie has some questions about women that are false teachers, some false teachers. Does she want us to list them? We can I think so. Them. Yes. Um, some that false teachers special. like uh, Beth Moore, mm -hmm. um, Joyce Meyer, Paula White, Priscilla uh, Shire. Yes. Uh, Christine Kane. Yep. Um, 
That's a big one that people don't talk about a lot. Christine yeah. Kane, for sure. She's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. some that we would warn against. There are a few that like uh, are not false teachers, but that we're a little nervous a little. about. And Jim Wilkin would follow fall yeah. into that. That's we- our number two. Oh, is it? Oops. Yeah, sorry. It's yeah. our number two. I didn't look that far down. Because okay. we, we've had so many people ask about the Jen Wilkins thing. True. We have. But those are the ones that we just listed. Beth Moore, Paula White. Um, Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer. Mm-hmm. Um, Who Shire, else? The oh, and, and Voskamp? And Voskamp is another one. That's a good point. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. So there's a few. There's There's not as many women false teachers in general. Because there's not that many women teachers, but there are a lot right. of male false teachers. But those are some of the ones that we would say do not. You do not want to listen or read any yes. of the books they have yes. to offer. Yeah, I saw Kim Walker those. had a Kim Walker Smith had a book out too. So really, you got to be careful even with the books that are at Barnes and Noble and any Christian yep. Christian bookstore. Just because it's a Christian label and it sounds great doesn't mean it is. True. Um, uh, yeah, it doesn't mean it's not sound or biblical. It and it is our responsibility as believers to be discerning. It's our responsibility that we are um, to warn other people. And you can't warn other people if you are um, soaking in all these things without paying any attention. So we want to pay attention even to the teachers that we love. Like Becca and I actually just were researching um, a teacher that we adore. We were really concerned. Right. We saw some concerning information that thankfully just turned out not to be a problem. But we were definitely willing to check into it, even though it was somebody that we, we adore listening to. So regardless of whether or not you... In, in in particular, especially especially if you love if you love these people, you need to hold them accountable. You need to be checking yeah. on them because that is our responsibility and our role. So no excuses. Mm-hmm. Good ones to mention. Good ones. I love this list. Yes, me too. Okay, yeah. you want to do every other one? Like you name one. Oh yeah, I love that. So cute. Yeah, start it. You want to start it? Yeah, totally. Right. Okay. Michelle Leslie. Oh, Carmen from Biblical Creative. Through the Narrow, which is Gina and Tammy. Gina Cooks and Tammy Dykes, Through the Narrow. Love it. Love, it. love them. Love you guys. Um, Amy Spreeman, who is also sure. on Michelle Leslie's um, podcast, podcast, right? Yep. What was that one called? And I she forget. joined oh, A Word Fitly Spoken. And yes. she also, I think, writes from time to time for um, Fighting for the Faith and joins nice. Chris Rosebro on his channel from time to time. We have Chris Bartz. If you, or not Chris um, Bartz. Brooke Bartz. <laughs> You were combining it. Wrote, yes, I was. Chris uh, Brooke Bards wrote Chronic Love. We have her book here. She joined us on the program. If you click the link above, it'll take you over to that episode just in case you want to watch it. She is a wonderful woman of God, and her book is fantastic. Yeah, and she'll have more books coming out too. We also have Susan Heck um, yes. on here. She's got great books, great things with the master, I think is what her main ministry is kind of titled um, with the master. So there's awesome books and awesome material on YouTube. Um, podcast to listen to her amazing absolutely and there's going to be a card right above here as well for that episode because we also interviewed susan heck and it was a tremendous blessing so if you haven't seen that one there's a card up above elizabeth crada and her her blog which i believe is in times is what her blog is called in times prophecy i think or something to that oh nice I'll make sure to find out and put that in here the correct mm-hmm. the correct link. But she does a great job of fairly checking these these people out, like false teachers and things of that nature. Her blog is such a blessing to me. Last one. It's Lindsay Davis Knotts. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm really looking forward to like whatever um, her and, and Zach is going to be doing in the future. Um, I'm really excited. And we should share about all of our podcasters. Oh, I love that idea. Right? There, Yeah, there's plenty of women on our podcasting thing, or not just women, but yeah, but she wanted to know just women. Yeah, absolutely. Right. There's Emily Evie, who's married to Zach Evie, and they have the Aquila and Priscilla Hour. Um, and we have uh, the Chuck and Low Show, so Low on the Chuck and Low Show. Um, awesome. They just uh, put a new episode out. It'll be from last week. It'll be Friday, but uh, it'll be available, and I'm excited to listen to that tonight. Yay! Super exciting. And then also Emma. Emma just started, and yes. that is always only, and her, her podcast is going to be such a blessing. She's going to be talking directly about how to glorify God in your life, which is such a wonderful topic that I just don't think you could ever accept. Yeah. It's a great and, question. And we had Sandy and Edward Ramirez on Breath of True. Life that should be starting hopefully soon. Um, but she's awesome in the uh, Facebook group. Uh, posts really great stuff and really great um, uh, Mama B to us. Yes, that's what we call her. She's our Mama B. Yay! Okay, that was a really good question, Connie. Thank you. Our next one, Jen Wilkins again. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? It's like Jen Wilkins. 
again. Again. <laughs> we did get quite a bit of pushback, a lot more than we um, had anticipated, actually, because I just thought that this was something that was um, widely accepted, that this was something concerning, kind of like the Francis Chan right. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when we warned about Francis Chan just the other day on Instagram, I didn't get any pushback, but I got a couple of people asking what on earth was, what was going on. Like what? So mm-hmm. I think I took for granted with Francis Chan and also Jen Wilkins that people had already heard these things. Um, when people are busy and they have a lot of things going on, they're not necessarily hearing all this stuff. So I do re- regret not getting deeper into the Jen Wilkins thing because right. it caused some pushback where that pushback could have been avoided if, if right. I had known that this wasn't something that was well known, but um, so we didn't say that Jen heck that Jen Wilkin was a heretic. Uh, yeah. We don't believe that she's a heretic. We do believe, however, that she is hanging around heretics like Beth Moore. Yeah. That her her general trajectory, the things that she's saying, the things that she's doing, is very concerning. And so um, there have been comments made that were unbiblical. There have been comments made that were just discouraging or and I'm not just talking about the comparing Jesus to our period right right yeah I I was disappointed to hear anybody defend that it shouldn't be defended it was absolutely indefensible there should never be a point in time Mm -hmm. whenever we are comparing the cross where Christ suffered in our place to something that is um yeah to our humanness no no anything absolutely not exactly yeah Yeah. there 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 needs to be more um, respect and honor to God right And we, um, our episode wasn't even titled Name That Heresy. In fact, we just put it, okay, ladies. And then we just kind of talked about it because it was really big. But like, t- did we say, and I, we both listened to it again. We did not say she was a heretic, um, but, we, but we did say we couldn't recommend her. So yeah. we do say yes, being cautious to her. Because ultimately mm-hmm. what we see, what Lauren and I have seen a lot with that moment they make, there's a moment and they cross that line. and. Yep. Then again, it, it just it just kind of begets itself when they kind of get into um into I don't I don't want to say exactly false teaching, but she's on that cusp, right? Um, yeah, it, it, it's um the reason it's concerning is because somebody who may have been super solid like five years ago, it it does happen where we see people mm-hmm. writing wonderful books that start a whole movement across the entire nation. And then they completely and totally apostatize that happens. We see it. Mm-hmm. So we need to be cautious. We need to be careful when we see somebody that is moving in these directions, like she is, we need to be praying for her. And we also want to be con- concerned and cautious in the yeah. kids. We can't recommend her. It's can't. not a hit against her personally. We're praying for her. We hope that this is not a Francis Chan moment, right. that this is just, you know, she's, she's being influenced by Beth Moore and maybe some other people that she's preferably going to repent mm-hmm. of and return. So that's that. We did not and do not nope. call her a heretic, but we just can't recommend her. Next is Carmen's question. Carmen's question. She texted us earlier with it last week. Yeah. The week before. And she asked about um, what our thoughts were on um, new complementarianism. I think it's also new um, egalitarianism. I can't even say it. New egalitarianism. Um, views that Amy Bird and like the theology gals are speaking about. Um, so we were informed also about this reformed group that we found on Facebook that I want, they are reformed feminists. Okay. Like that are out there. And Lauren and I are, we like, we are old school. We like our reformed theology old school. Okay. Yes. So Lauren and I to a point where we don't even prefer to um, exegete um, straight up from the Bible and go through like um, expository type teaching, we actually bring a brother on to help us with that when we do do that. Um, yeah. So it's not straight from us. So we're kind of old school. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think um, I totally agree with that. The, the reason why we bring a brother on to also just, just like, so people can understand, we don't know who's listening and we can't control who's listening. So if we were just doing a Bible study on our own, just me and Becca and some of the sisters in Christ that we know, there wouldn't be any problem. We wouldn't have any issue with that. But we don't know who's going to listen to us and we're responsible for that. And we are not um, in agreement with any pushing the limits on this, which I feel like it, it starts with pushing the limits where you just say, OK, well, you know, it's okay for women to teach men as long as they're not, you know, shepherding them. Oh, it's okay for women to teach men as long as they're they're not teaching them in the congregation and things to that nature. And it gets pushed, it gets pushed, it gets pushed a little bit here and a little bit there. And then you have um, the end game is the groups that we see where they're not just, they're not just feminists 
claiming to be reformed, mm-hmm. um, they are just full on feminists, and the posts yeah, that they're posting feminist. are horrible. They're it's just shocking. absolutely terrible. It is. Shocking. It's disgusting. Yeah, it the things I know. Um, it almost reminded me of like what we came out of. Um, mm-hmm. And Word of Faith, they're, it's hardcore being pushed for, you know, Beth Moore, Jen. Well, these these are topics that are very, like, it gets everybody's attention because that is, like, the new wave of um, that unorthodox line. Yeah. And it usually yeah. just begets itself, just like Justin Peter says, not too long after when women become pastors of a church or preaching in that title, that authority. So not too long after they start approving of like gay marriage, they start approving of other sin. And it, I was like, that's so true. That's how it was for me. And when he said that it clicked, I, I immediately, I heard that after getting, after hearing the gospel and I'm like, yep. Cause before when I was word of faith, it was, it was accepted. Yeah. For women pastors. So when that's I heard that, there's no pushback in the word of faith over that at all. Yeah, yeah. That's what I saw. I was like, he's so right. That's what we would do. I was becoming uh, approving of, of same sex marriage before um, coming to reform and being yeah. ordained. So. And I've done a whole series on feminism and the blog just to point out the connections that it has to like witchcraft and things of that nature. So I think that feminism to begin with is something that as believers, we need to be cautious and careful, even approaching these subjects. Our, our authority is not our emotions and our authority is not the world's standards. Our authority is God's word. And so at any point, if you're veering from that authority, then you have already stepped away from what is authoritative over anyone else in the church. So if you want to go out and be disobedient to scripture, then you go out and you be disobedient to scripture. But the problem that I see is that so many of these women who are, they want to claim to be feminist. They want to claim to be, you know, reformed or Christian feminist or whatever you want to say. And they want everyone else to agree with them. Yep. And if not, then they're going to, they're going to like bash you. They're going to belittle you. What we see in that group that Becca's talking about that we're not even going to name because we right. don't want to give them any credit or any, any attention whatsoever in that way. Yeah. What we see there is people absolutely just bashing on other women who disagree with them. Um, your authority is not my authority. Like your opinion about anything to this nature has no, no say whatsoever in what I do. My authority is God's word. And if you can't like book, chapter, verse, context, context. Yeah, then I don't care what you have to say about your this feeling issue. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't affect anything. So yeah, that was concerning. It is. And we we so when this post will have been posting um our Monday episode with Patrick, he came on and you'll even see in the title that it says that he mansplains. And so we actually mm-hmm. kind of wanted to share that you will know that Lauren and I um, believe in the, the biblical roles that have been laid out um, as Paul and Jesus have shared about in the Bible, like. It's it. So she and I are complementarianism. I don't believe that, uh, and Lauren doesn't believe that men and women are equal in everything. And the man is the authority in the relationship and the head and all that stuff that Paul says in Ephesians. Yeah. You know, just the biblical stuff. It's cool. There's totally a card right. right up here. If you missed that episode with our brother B, there's a card right up there. You can click yeah, it. It's It'll such a great episode. episode. Thank you so much. Yeah. We're going to have him on again. So let us know, listeners, what you want us to talk about that with him. Um, so we're going to yep. keep having him on. Absolutely. It's true. Oh, this isn't on here, but he did send us a funny question oh, on yeah. Facebook. Do you want to add it real quick? Yeah. Do you want, Um, I have the, the funny, funny questions. I, I have like a funny, funny one. I know. I have a funny one at the bottom from him, too. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, you do. Yeah, okay. We'll put them all together. Okay. Put that together. Okay. So, um, let's do the, we could skip number. Well, four is kind of good. What is your prayer and devotional time? Like that should be quick. And I can answer number yeah. five really quickly too. Okay. So that'll be, that'll be easy. Okay. So number four, give yourself a grace card for Bible study balance and devotional time. I like that. Mm-hmm. That's really good. I'm glad you added yeah. that. That's important. We put a lot of weight on ourselves. Don't we like, mm-hmm. Oh no, I'm, I, I, and I don't know if anybody else has this issue, but if I am slack one day, like, let's say I I'm sick and I don't get up on time or something happens where I don't have as much time for prayer and study as I did the day before, my mind immediately begins to assume that I'm spiraling out of control and I'm going to like eventually get to the point where I just never am doing these things. And this is so important to me And the heart. And that is right. That we want to have prayer and we want to have devotion, but the grace is needed for the days that we are not able, that doesn't mean that the next day you're going to be not able. And it doesn't mean that you failed in anything that that day that you, you're, maybe you need to actually push out some time later on in the day to do those things. And that's okay too. But 
So this question says, what is your prayer and devotional time like? And I'm super excited about this question. Yes. I know I asked you this last week because I, I was struggling. I was like, I've been, you know, pain's been like this. And then we were so busy and, um, and I'm like, I'm behind. I at least try to get a Proverbs in. That is like, if I'm in a lot of pain or if I have um, so much going on or I woke up late, I try to at least get a Proverbs in. Lauren and I usually try to do that before uh, we even get on here. We try to do a Proverbs at least before. Um, Cause you don't always necessarily have your time to study as much um, depending because we try to record as early as we can. Um, but prayer and devotional time, I am learning more about prayer. Uh, Ricky and I are doing a book together. Um, we didn't post about it in the, uh, the book B club, but it's, uh, it's from Susan Heck. Um, oh, cool. yeah. So it's really interesting. Yeah. If anybody's interested, I'll send it to Lauren and put it in the link below. Um, nice. I'm learning a lot and I like how Lauren's like, she's one that's, uh, um, told me about her particular Bible study study habits that she does and I do that too now so you want to tell about that oh yeah yeah. that's super cute I I I started the same way that you did though like are you talking about well one day I'll just I'll get a proverb in and Mm -hmm. so that's how it started with me where it was sort of um spiraled from there where like okay I I I wanted to make sure I heard somebody say if you could just read a a proverb a day there's 30 proverbs each each 30 days most of the time, each month, there's 31 proverbs. So most of the time you can get a proverb a day. And that makes it easier for me because I have a hard time with memory. And so I I tend to forget where I've left off. Now it's great with the Bible app because I highlight the the chapter that I read that day. And that way, the next day when I go into, I I see which chapter I read yesterday, so I can move on to the next chapter. So it's been really helpful for me. Um, But so a proverb and a psalm each day. And then um, I try to read straight through the Old Testament. So right now I'm in Deuteronomy. I'm almost done with Deuteronomy. I'll read one chapter of the Old Testament um, each morning and then a chapter of a New Testament gospel. So I go through the gospels and I get to the end of all four gospels. I start back over. And then right now my um, extreme study time where I really mull over a few chapters at a time is in Second Corinthians. So right now my, my um, first the second Corinthians chapters one, two, and three are where I'm at, where I'm going to be reading those all week long. And then come Monday, I'll be moving on to the next three um, chapters in that book. And that sort of helps me if it's a smaller book, I'll just read the whole book each day. And that'll, that'll help too. And it, it helps me to um, really get like a better understanding of those verses where instead of just uh, zip, zipping through it, like the rest of it, and when I get to the end of the New Testament doing that, I'll do it again in the, the again. Old Testament. So, yeah, I started doing that throughout the Old Testament and ended up in the New Testament. And so that's what I do with um, my Bible reading. But the devotionals have been really exciting because yes. I didn't previously have a lot of devotional time mm-hmm. where um, so I would go through these. Uh, extensive studies in a book like right now I'm in second Corinthians and I would try throughout the day to listen to maybe like John MacArthur. Um, uh, he goes through it. Um, John Calvin has a lot of uh, information about each and every book, but the yes. devotionals have been huge. They've been really helpful. The Bible app has those. And so we're both um, doing these together, these devotionals yes. together and with all of our humblebees. So if you're not a part yeah. of that, make sure that you join with us because it's been really helpful. So my prayer time is usually before I start scripture. Mm-hmm. So um, I try to pray first and that's just really because I can, um, I can remember to read scripture for some reason. That's not hard for me, maybe because it's on my phone and I have my phone with me. All the nice. time. But, yes. Um, if I don't do the prayer first, I will forget that. Like that's right. not something yeah. that I'll come back to. It will, it'll just slip my mind. So I try to do that first. And that's just, um, I'm praying about forgiveness of sins and t- trying to pray for like encouragement throughout the day and strength mm-hmm. and, and things of that nature and praying for family and friends and anyone else on our prayer list or our humble bee list that we have mm-hmm. and um, anyone that I know that's unsaved. And then, and then I move on to scripture and, and actually recently I've been doing the devotionals first and then the scripture yeah. after that because the, the devotionals have been so cool. The devotionals have been really great. I love seeing I love what it. people are commenting about too. Yeah. I love that. I know my, my prayer that I do, I usually, I don't know, I usually do either right around the time I do the Proverbs and then I might take a break and then I might do prayer. Um, and then some days I don't always get to all of the prayers. Sometimes I'm praying throughout the day. I've noticed that since over the last few weeks I pray. I just 
it's, it's nice to be more in prayer because then you just think about it more throughout the day to pray to God. So, yeah. but I, I actually write mine down. I, I might look into doing an app, but I write mine down um, by like, here's my family one page. Here's um, Lauren's family and podcast information oh. and Humblebee's and then um, other friends in the back or other people I, I may not know or and also my church family too. There's a page for that. And so I do it in pencil nice. because I change it sometimes throughout. Um, but I had another question for you, but that goes with number seven with this. It says, when we pray, do we need to keep asking the same things over and over again? I thought that we, we had a great question from um, someone from Instagram who wanted oh. to ask that. So, I like that question. Yeah. That's a really great question. Okay, so there's there's no reason not to continue to bring your petitions before the Lord. Um, if you are, um, the concern is that, okay, so the Catholics right. repeat the same prayers over and over again. They say the Hail Marys and things of that nature. So the concern is, are you repeating the same thing over yes. and over again? And right. the, the answer to that is your heart in the matter. Mm-hmm. So are you trying to get something by repeating this over and over again? Or are you bringing somebody before the throne because your heart aches for that person because they're lost or because they're in pain or things to that nature? Um, and so if you're, if you're praying to God and you're trying to pray for a specific person, like let's say you have a loved one that's unsaved and you're bringing them right. before the throne every single morning and you're like, God, should I keep doing this? Am I just being repetitive in my prayer? The answer to that is no, you're, you're not doing what the Catholics are doing with their, <laughs> with their repetitive prayers. It's not a chant, but you're not chanting the same thing over and over again. In fact, yes. most of the mornings, even though I'm praying for most of the same people, I'm usually not saying it the exact same way each morning yeah. because I like, I'm not, I'm not even going by the same like direction yeah. in the list. A lot of times, yeah. like my prayers will just like zip up and down through my list and things of that nature. But yeah, that's a really good question. There are people out there that are really concerned that they're. Yeah. And I think um, the way you said that was perfect. Cause I think that's even how Susan Heck kind of answered some of our questions. Like she'd be like, we, the goal is to not become legalistic about, because then we turn into a Pharisee and like, we're just doing it out of repetitiveness. And I like, what is the heart? What is your heart about this particular prayer and to pray without ceasing? Yeah, that's so, right. Prayer without ceasing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And your heart in there matters. Like, um, I, I was very convicted about the year that I was mostly praying for people that I wanted to see saved for selfish reasons. And really, honestly, our goal here, our only purpose in life is to glorify God. And so um, I needed to, I needed a heart readjustment. I needed a perspective change that these people, if they're going to be saved, they're going to be saved for the glory of God and not just because I want to fellowship with them. And so not that my heart in wanting them to be saved was wrong, but just that my petitions before the Lord, they were selfishly minded and I wasn't going before him for his glory, but that this was something that I desired. And so I did have to readjust that thought process. But speaking of the heart, the next question is actually directly, it's going to be our exact same answer just about, but in a different yeah. way. Allison asks, and I, I just want to give a shout out to Allison. You have been such an encouragement to both of us. Thank you for yes. your sweetness and your kindness. Allison asks, is it appropriate for a woman to teach in a church sanctuary if only women are present? What Bible versions are best to read? I read from two or three, just wanted your input on yes. that. So first let's tackle the women thing. Yes. Is it appropriate for women to teach other women in a sanctuary? Now, I would say that there's there's some caveats that I would want to put yes. on this. So I'm, I'm going to start with that to avoid offense and confusion. I would recommend that women teaching other women find any other place to do it than the sanctuary. If right. it's possible, yes. not because I think that it's sinful for a woman to teach another woman in a sink. Now, is it Sunday morning and you're the only pastor that's sinful, right? Like right. If, even, <laughs> even if your full right. congregation is nothing but women and you're a woman pastor, that's still a sin. Right. So don't, don't do this on a Sunday and don't do it if it's possible in the sanctuary, just to avoid confusion because you Mm -hmm. could cause someone to stumble through that. But if you have no other place, you have to remember that like the early church met in homes, they met in their houses. And so we, we have a situation where we see in the early church when we see in Acts, when they're talking about how they're meeting, they're having services, this is happening in a church. Most likely those meetings were a woman. As commanded by scripture, we are, as women, commanded to teach younger women. Yes. And like uh, we asked this question to Michelle Leslie about and uh, Amy Spreeman about how um, if what if I'm younger than you 
physically, right. but older than you in the faith, you know, then what, you know, yeah. then who should be teaching who? And they basic, their basic answer was like, if you're older in the faith, then you, you don't want to be taught by somebody younger in the faith. Like the idea here right. is somebody older in the faith, but ideally somebody older in the faith yes. and older than you. Perfect. So we're commanded to do that. We're commanded to teach the younger women and be taught by older women. So that's not sinful. That's okay. And commanded. And if the only place for you to do that is the same place, some churches meet together at schools, y'all like that. Yes. Um, yeah. There's nothing holy about the room that yeah, you're having the room. service to. Yeah. I've had it yeah. too. Like um, even our Bible study that we have before church, like our, our, our pastor, our associate pastor, whoever is doing, they won't, they usually aren't in the middle and they're not, all, they usually aren't on the stage. Um, that's only for when the pastor is preaching during the main service. So, um, and it's always a guy. So it's either an elder or a brother that's doing the Bible study because it's on a Sunday. Um, uh, we usually prefer to meet in a different room. Um, so we've always done that. And I've been to a Nancy Guthrie conference where so many women were coming together that we had to use um the main sanctuary because there were so many of us coming from all over um the state to visit and go to this conference so um she taught from from there but it was only to women it was only women conference so i think there's i like you said there's some caveats and what's our heart about it and i think um that can be a confusing thing for some that could be a hindrance right. or a stumbling block if you do have other options but you're focusing on using the main sanctuary um for i don't know aesthetics or I don't, I don't know. I don't know what other reasons you would want to do it in the main sanctuary. Um, Cause that could be confusing for some younger people in the faith. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check your heart in that. And then also make sure that you're explaining it. If that's, if that's the situation, yes. just, that's a good idea. just briefly before you start every, every single time that you're starting it and you're in the, the sanctuary, I would, I would want the um, older woman who's teaching to explain that and just right. sort of briefly explain what's happening. And to your, um, your question about the Bible versions that, oh, that yeah. are best to read. I love this question. I think this is very, mm -hmm. a very helpful question. I read the ESV or the NASB. Those two mm -hmm. are really well translated. I don't read the King James version or the new King James version simply because there is a language gap. Right? Yes. Like, it may yes. have been well translated at the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> It's not now because there's a get, and that's for the King James version. Um, the, the new King New King James version does have some issues, but originally right. King James version they they really worked hard to translate that yes, correctly. They did. What did you read back when you were younger? Oh, or before King James version. Really, King even James when you were version. younger. It must have been why I didn't understand anything because there's a it's mm. like it's like half of the same language and a half of a different one. Yeah, it, yeah, it's Shakespeare. Words don't mean the same. It yeah. is. It's Shakespeare. You have to know the context of mm. what you're reading with Shakespeare to understand his words. Because that's yes. why there's classes on his work. Yeah, like, that's the point of that. Like, it's, yeah. So that's my thing. That's my yeah. ESP and also, and ESB. also yes. like the the Charles. Virgin Study Bible, I think is supposed to be a really great one too. Like I think it's CSB. Yeah. Is that it? Uh, I haven't I, seen it yet, though. Mm -hmm. I haven't read into it, so yeah, I don't there's know. There's a lot of, that's a there's other great commentaries. Uh John Calvin and John MacArthur mm -hmm. have really great commentaries to go along with it, which is yeah. awesome. I love whenever I get to a scripture and I'm like, gosh, I don't know what that means. I really or just I want more context, I just go check it. Um nice. I really enjoy that feature. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super. I like that too. I like that. Any, anything that can help explain what yes. is difficult. difficult yes. Was. Yes. Difficult. Like, helpful. what does that mean in Proverbs? What does that mean? Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. I totally get it. I love it. Okay. So next, number, good number mythical six. morning. Yes. Yes. We're just yeah, going to briefly... Morning. Briefly Which is so sad because you were telling me, remember like at the beginning, feel free to take this out, teacher Lauren, but we had, we were so excited about the Good Mythical Morning and they, they were, you know, writers for Veggie Tales or whatnot. And you and I were hoping that we could someday kind of be like a Good Mythical Morning type where we could be a daily show. We could have people watching. We are funny. Um, um, we would never go to that extent of him, of theirs, um, uh, of just only being funny, but, uh, uh, I'm really sad about this. Yeah, I am too. Mm -hmm. It's sad to see because it is it it, it is entertainment for people who don't want to have to be like offended every time they 
try to watch something entertaining, right? <laughs> like that's what we have on television. We, we, we don't want that, but unfortunately, um, Rhett and Link have apostatized and they've come out yes. and at least they've been open about it now. Like they're very open. Both of them are agnostics. And so, um, that was really sad to see, but they both are, they, they, so they have a podcast and they did about five and a half hours worth of podcasting to explain this. And they are both claiming that it is evolution that has caused their issues with Christianity. And so I was so sad and so heartbroken to see it because they mentioned how you can go to creation sites and see their answers, but they just didn't feel like the answers were good enough for them. Mm -hmm. And it was sad to me to see that like uh, they have in their own hearts and in their own minds, put God on trial. And to them, God needed to answer to their questions. And that was really sad for me to see that like in Romans, Paul says, on the contrary, who are you? Oh man, that you would, ask uh, sorry my my phone my headphones did a little oh. feedback but who are you old man that you would ask that you would even speak back to the god of the universe and so it was really sad for me to see and this is why it's important that we are educated in not just creationism we need to be able to have an answer against evolution because it is it is affecting our young people today it's affecting a lot of people but we also need to have a better answer for these things because evidence was what caused them to become believers, quote unquote believers. And evidence is what caused them to stop being believers, quote unquote. And so it, the evidential idea that you can prove to somebody that God exists and then they're just going to magically become saved is just not true. So as soon as their belief system was challenged, because they were not genuinely believers, they fell away. We know scripture tells us this is what's going to happen. So we need to have a, um, we need to have an answer for the hope that we have within, yeah. right? Like that's, that's our, that's our goal. The gospel is what they needed to hear, not evidence against evolution. I know the fact that they put God on trial is like, you need to yeah. answer my question. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. You Oof. puny human. <laughs> yes. Right. This creature from the dirt. <laughs> Yes. Who that is you? Exactly. Yes. Gird up your loins, Joe. I will ask you and you will answer me. That is who we are. Okay. Hi. Like, who are you, old man? That that was really sad to me. I just wanted to point mm -hmm. that out. Um, hopefully we can talk about that more in the future and sort of go more in depth with it. But yes. there there this is happening to people every single day where they are being convinced by utter nonsense. Why? Why are they being convinced by utter nonsense? Because their heart is un saved unchanged yeah. it's a hard heart they want an excuse to believe that they don't have to believe in hell that was one of their issues they were like well if i don't have to believe that god sends people to hell why would i want to because right. god is a just judge and there yes. are actual consequences for your sins that's that's what the answer that we need to have right like we need to yeah. know Answers. Don't people think about like, you know, if you're not even guaranteed 80, 90 years of life. Right. And this is so, it's so minuscule timeline compared to eternity. And, yep. um, and why did, why, the, why they're elevating self and our, our life now is so temporal. It's so carnal. Um, but gosh, I pray that they hear truth, guys. They need to hear the gospel. We need to be sharing the gospel. We need to keep praying for them. They have a huge audience. And this is, I think you were saying that too about, um, this is causing people to stumble in their faith and to question. And, and, um, so that's very concerning and very false teaching, false teachers up in here. That's we're right. Fired. Yes. They're false teachers. They, have, they have 25 million subscribers on YouTube alone. Like, and I tremble when I consider the fact that they're going to be held accountable for all right. of the people that have yes. been led astray for this. And it's heartbreaking to hear that they, I am thankful that they're open. I'm thankful that they're being honest because the truth is, is that they have struggled with this. They said for years in years, wow. they've struggled with this and they just kept it on the inside because everybody expected them to be the Christian entertainers. Right. And so while they're struggling with these questions and not telling anybody, they're still putting on the show. And so I'm glad that they've been open about this, but I'm also just, just really heartbroken to see yes. the effects that sin has in the world. And so that is what we wanted to talk why, why that's on the list. We just no, no questions about it. Just something that we wanted to respond to that. There are absolutely answers to everything that they've, that they've mentioned that the heart does not need 
answers. Answers are not going to raise up dead bones. That's, that's just not, it it doesn't matter how many answers that you give to an atheist. It doesn't matter how many answers you give to an agnostic. They don't, they, they don't come to Christ because Christ is calling those that are his sheep. Yes. So it's not like your evidence is going to change that. Um, They're blinded. Your evidence isn't going to be just, it's the same with creation where we see, okay, a creationist will pick up a fossil and a a evolutionist will pick up a fossil and they're looking at the exact same evidence. And they're going to come to vastly different conclusions based on their worldview. So it's a worldview issue that we have to come up against. So we just wanted to address that. And it sounds like they're looking for a sign, a miracle, like in a way, not in word of faith way, but like they're looking for more things like even, you know, the when Jesus was being hung up and the Jews were like, you can just save yourself and we'll believe you. <laughs> right. Like, you know, exactly. Like you guys watched him do all these things and you yeah. still didn't believe him. So still, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I'm, I'm glad you brought it back. So that's a really good point. Okay. We've got some shenanigan questions. We do for brother, excited. brother, brother B Patrick over there. Ooh. Came across. Ooh. Yay. Ooh. I love it. Yeah. I love this. You want me to do the first one that's question. on here? Yes, please. Okay. He asked, um, what makes you the most embarrassed or when you have been the most embarrassed? I, think, did we, I feel like I, I've talked about this before, maybe somewhere, but I'll totally still share it. I think we have. We asked this question once a long time ago, but what's funny, what he said in response was that like when people sing to him and he doesn't know where to look. And I thought that was so funny because it's like a, it's your birthday when, when we were having a conversation, we we're talking about your birthday. And yes. I was like, I'm totally going to be singing to you when next time I see you. And I did. Once Aww. you popped in, I was singing to you and you were like, where do I look? Yes. Oh, I, so yeah. Yeah. Well, do I look at you? Do I not look at you? Like my, oh, and my husband, word. Blake played, he got his guitar. Out. I didn't know why he was getting his guitar out, but he, I can't, I can only do one side. Sorry. <laughs> this one. That's it. I can't do the can't make that go up. Yeah, he got his got his guitar out and um I didn't know why he was getting out and he just started singing at me and it reminded me he just looked me in the eye the whole time and I remembered Patrick posting that comment yesterday. <laughs> but I was like I was thinking about it and Blake used to when we were dating, um it, we would Skype a lot because we were both living in different states and he had a hard time looking me in the eye because he thought I was so cute. Oh, and but this time he, we're married, so and he's he's singing the song, and we're just completely making eye contact. And I was like, oh, he loves me so much that he's, you know, looking me in the eye now, like he's comfortable with me now. Like, oh my it was goodness. just a cool moment. Yeah. That is super cute. I love that. Oh my yeah. goodness, yeah. that's really cute. The love has I grown. Have, I have to tell the story of how you've been embarrassed after that. Super cute. Story. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is such a hard one. I mean, the the. I talked about this, I think, on the show before. Farting does not make me cringe or doesn't make me embarrassed. You know, I just, I just full out share it with people. Uh, but when I was in ninth grade, I think it was in math class, and I didn't feel anything. There was no smoke before the fire. Okay, there was a fire in the hole. Didn't know it was loaded, and <laughs> I went to go grab something out of my backpack. You know, kind of leaning down, and as soon as I pushed more forward <laughs> a fart came out and it was like he, the teacher wasn't teaching we were all working on our homework like it was the worst moment worst timing yes ever yes worst timing worst ever, ever. Yeah. and I, I was like no my just tripped my foot <laughs> or something my foot got caught foot skid yeah yeah foot skid <laughs> that's all and the worst I feel like that's the worst that, that's that all I can think sense. of what about you um, so I, I can't remember last time what I even, what, I, and now I'm trying to think what would be the most embarrassing and I can't think of a whole lot. Um, mm-hmm. but I do remember that I was, uh, my mom had gotten me a dress one time and it was like this really flurry for frill, but it was black and but it was really, really frill frilly and I wore it to school and, um, I, I was just really excited. You know, she bought me this really cute dress. And I got to school and people were like, why are you wearing such a fancy dress? And and so I was like, oh, I got to go to a funeral. So uh, I got a funeral after school. And so I get in the bus after school and um, my, I'm riding the bus home with my older sister who goes to like at that point, she's right. in a higher grade of school. And so mm-hmm. um, one of my friends was like, oh, oh um, I'm so sorry that you guys lost somebody. You know, who, whose funeral are you going to? My sister was like, we're not going to a funeral. Right. <laughs> and I had to explain to this friend. 
again. Like, oh, yeah, sorry, I made that up. That, was... that sucks. Yeah, you're caught in it. I think that's it. I, I know that Patrick yeah. sent us another question, but I can't find it on here. Um, it. Yeah, and I'm so also, we'll save that for next. I'm also embarrassed. I'm getting thinner hair. I get really, oh. I get really embarrassed by it. And I should but I think when I, when I, <laughs> when I originally lost weight, like a few years, it was 10 years ago. I, I don't, I think I was doing the, the biggest loser type style where I was working out like four or five hours a day and I was eating like a thousand calories. And I think that messed up my hormones and, um, yeah, that makes and sense. just never been able, and it's getting worse now I'm getting older, but it makes me embarrassed a little bit. But I don't mind caring about it and being open. And there if anybody go. has any tips, I'm taking biotin. I don't know. There you I go. Started. I, I had to buy special shampoos and you can kind of see, you can see it coming back now, but that did happen to me too. Like if I pull my hair up, I don't know if it's age, but you can kind of see like my little fur frilly hairs. I, I'm just like, look, I have bangs. Sort of. You have bangs. If what I pull you, my what hair up, it pulls out. It's like um uh, a thing I got off of. I have Amazon. I'll send it to you. It's okay. actually just like a, a beard and hair shampoo, nice. but like I don't Ooh. know. It makes my is it kind of like Rogaine? Grow. It's kind of it. Well, it's, it doesn't okay. have any chemicals in it, but oh, it's got like yeah. castor okay, oil good. and stuff like yes. that. Yeah, like all the healthy stuff, which I didn't think yeah. would work. I actually buy it for my husband because I like the way it smells. And I used it um, a couple of times, and my hair started sprouting out everywhere. And I was like, one morning I woke up and I had like all these like <laughs> all the albums here, and I was like, oh. Yes. Okay. That that works. So yeah, I'll send it. I'll send you a little link to Yay. it and show you. Yeah, it really helps. But if I pull my hair up in a ponytail, like half of it falls out the next day. It's crazy. So I don't oh, know about yeah. age or I'm definitely not getting enough vitamins. So. <laughs> not kidding. I know. Yeah. Yeah. If I had known that, someone taught like, but Biggest Loser is like it's 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 been so detrimental really to people's health that you should not be working out five hours a day and eating no. a thousand calories. So. It's not, it's not um, attainable forever. So eventually you're going to stop. And, and a lot of people actually got to um, that weight because of health reasons, like, right. Like uh, hormonal reasons or thyroid reasons. And that needs to be fixed. Like it doesn't matter how many times you exercise, there might be other reasons. You should go yes. check that out first. <laughs> like yes. maybe it's a thyroid issue, just, just a possibility. Just an idea. It might not just be yes. this. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, that's all we have for you today. That's, Humblebees. that's our mega list. We love you guys. We hope Becca does not have any kind of virus. And yep. don't forget to check us out on all of our cool social media websites. And we'll see you later. Bye, Humblebees. Bye, guys. Love you. Thanks for listening, Humblebees. This is Tulips and Honey. Over and out. I think that diamond still needs a little more polish. Yeah. <laughs>